Hey there everybody, Forrest here, and welcome to the next episode of Reacteria! After posting the last episode, I got a ton of requests for this specific video. It's called The Evolution Song by David Reeves. It's published out of David Reeves Ministries. Uh, it has 134,000 views and 18,000 dislikes. That ratio, though. And one thing that I found interesting was that a lot of the people who sent it to me and a lot of the comments on this video all say the same thing. Even if you don't agree with this, even if you believe in evolution, even if you're an atheist, you gotta admit that this is such a catchy song. Oh, it's such a good song that you just, you hate to love it and you love to hate it. So I'm excited to see what it is. You know, maybe this will be the first one to break over five on the Science Teacher Challenge level scale. Maybe they'll have some actual compelling or at least catchy arguments in here. I'm, I'm genuinely stoked. But before I I get into this, I want to take a second to thank my patrons. Take a look at this brick of people here. This is my patron wall from my website. Look at how thick and delicious this wall of human names are. These people are absolute rock stars that make my career possible. And they're all so handsome. They're so handsome. Did you know that you actually become 8.5% more handsome when you become a patron on my Patreon? How cool is that? That's a real scientific fact for you right there. All stupid jokes aside, I would not have a career if it were not for the kindness of strangers on the internet. The patrons on Patreon, the people who buy from my merch store, the people who send donations on Cash App and Venmo and PayPal, not only are you making it possible for me to eat food, but you are also making it possible for me to make this kind of content. So sincerely, to all of you from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being a part of my dream. And now, without any further ado, let's get into the video. This thing's only four minutes long. I doubt this is gonna be a very long episode. Protozoa is my name. I'm just a single cell. I'm sorry that I have no proof. Perhaps it's just as well. Oh man. 19 seconds in, <laughs> it's, uh, first of all, protozoa didn't come first. Protozoa are actually quite advanced. They're eukaryotes, just like you and I are eukaryotes. They're not prokaryotes like bacteria and archaea, which again, bacteria and archaea are quite advanced compared to the beginning of life. Uh, and as far as not having any proof, there's a lot of proof of, of early single-celled organisms. One really good one is stromatolites. Stromatolites are these great big mats of cyanobacteria, just layer after layer after layer of these very early bacteria that form these boulders, basically, these fossilized concretions that are so big you can climb on them. The dresser formation is full of them, and that's like almost three and a half billion years old. So we're talking about the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. The first billion or so years was the Hadean period. We had the heavy bombardment. You know, the Earth was just pounded to death by asteroids and meteors and things. So, like, it wasn't a place you could live. Pretty immediately after that, we have fossils of, of early, early microorganisms. So, like, I don't know what you're talking about with this whole no proof thing. Um, there's a lot. There's a whole lot. Of my beginning back in time when from a glob of goo. Supposedly I started things, the end of which is you. Man, the whole glob of goo thing is such a played out argument. Like this video is six years old, but even by that standard, it's just overdone and it's boring and it's old and it's just pointless. I mean, like it's, it's worth your time to try harder rather than just making this silly straw man. You do know that abiogenesis isn't just there was some sludge and a frog crawled out, right? You do know that we have observed chemical evolution taking inorganic molecules and through totally natural processes, they self-assemble into big organic macromolecules. We've seen that in like a jar, right? You, you know that? You do know that we've found amino acids and things on like meteors and asteroids in space, like, come on. It's just, it's too easy. Also, the whole primordial soup thing, even that is, is pretty outdated. The whole idea that there was just this slime that where the first life came from. We can look at deep sea hydrothermal vents now. These are volcanoes under the ocean. 
And not only do they have all of the ingredients that you need for life, all of these organic and inorganic molecules that go together to form you know, living things, but also there's a tremendous amount of acids and bases spewing up here. So we have proton gradients, the same kind of proton gradients that give your cells energy today. That's how your mitochondria work. They form this big pile of protons on one half of a membrane, and then they pass them through this protein called ATP synthase, which spins like a little turbine, and it produces adenosine triphosphate. So like, we can see the chemistry of life even in non-living things and non-living places. So like, this is just, I, I know it's a song, but like, the way you're presenting it is really lame. Also, I like how you stuck PhD on your lab coat there to insinuate to the kids watching this that anybody with a doctorate is just some moron doing guesswork and they can't be trusted. Unless it's a doctorate in theology, right? Yeah. For untold centuries, I thought that all was going well. Then I became dissatisfied as just a single cell. My fortitude, my guts and grit would stand me in good stead. I made this as my final goal to be a quadruped. Yeah, evolution isn't driven by desire, it's driven by selection pressure. See, this is the problem with this video. This is why I, I, I hesitated to even do this one, because obviously this is just, it's a song. It's a music video. It's for kids. It's a silly little thing. It would be ridiculous for me to sit here and nitpick and get real super detailed with it, because this is intended to be silly and to just be played for children. But the problem is, when this is played for children, this guy isn't going to clarify that. You know that. This guy isn't going to come out and be like, all right, kids, this isn't actually what evolution is. This isn't actually how science works. This is just kind of how it sounds to me, and I thought it was a bit goofy, so I made this silly little song. No, this is just put out this way so that the kids listening to this, this is all they're ever going to know. This is all they're going to get about evolution. This is what's played for them in Sunday school, and this is as far as their education goes. So it's just indoctrination. It's just showing kids like, hey, all these super smart scientists, you don't have to take them seriously. And then later on, when they need to take them seriously, when they need help, when they want to live in a better world, in a better society, when they need medicine, when they need cars, when they need what, then, you know, it's a totally different set of rules. But for right now, you know, oh, PhD, you're kidding me. Come on. You know, it's just, it's really just, it's gross. It's super gross. And it's hard to nitpick it because I know it's supposed to be silly. But it's just gross. Kudos for knowing the word quadruped, I guess. Good on you. Ambition surged within my cell down in my gloppy bog. By protozoa and effort, I became a polywog. Yeah, just like with the other thing, talking about protozoa as like the beginning and how that makes no sense, polywog is just another word for tadpole. It's a really weird niche word that hasn't been used for a long time. I don't know if this guy is from like the deep south where that kind of language is still prevalent, but yeah, it just means tadpole. It's not an evolutionary stage. It's a stage in the life cycle of most amphibians. It's, it's, it's the larval stage for a frog and, and a toad and a salamander. So, like, we weren't all tadpoles at one point. You j I guess you needed a rhyme. But again, the problem with this is that you're presenting it to children. And then those children are going to regurgitate this. And they're going to be very, very wrong. And that's lame. Illusion, the science of confusion. Because of all the missing links, they don't know what to do. Evolution, incredible delusion. They tell us that we started out as just a glob of goo. I hope that you guys can see where my frustration comes from with this. Because again, like I just said a second ago, I understand it's just a silly little music video and I shouldn't sit here and like nitpick every single word and like, oh, you didn't quite phrase this right. I, I get that. But he just reiterated, they tell us that we started out as just a glob of goo. No, we didn't. Nobody's saying that. That's not how anything works. And then the whole thing about, oh, there's all these missing links. 
Just another boring, outdated argument like we talked about in the last video. The fossil record is necessarily incomplete. And even if we lost all of it, even if we didn't have this very obvious pattern of life over the past 4 billion years leading up to us, even if we were to throw out every single fossil, we still have a tremendous amount of evidence showing evolution, homology, embryology, vestigial structures, genetic evidence, observed speciation and adaptation, autopomorphies. Like, there's, there's so much that we can look at and say, here's very obvious indications of evolution. This is overwhelming evidence. The fossil record is just leftovers. It's just proof of what happened as the evidence from other places shows. So you've got just mountains and mountains of evidence to choose from. A vast preponderance of data showing the course of life over almost four billion years, and you're choosing to ignore all of it just so you can make these weird, really lazy little arguments and then show those arguments to children. So you're just setting kids up to fail. And as an educator, that pisses me off. For umpteen million years or so, I wriggled all about. Encumbered by my stupid tail, then fins began to sprout. Or was it legs I next acquired? Really, I forget. With evolution in control, you don't know what you'll get. Yeah, uh, you forget. But the fossil record doesn't forget. It's actually pretty obvious. When you go back and look, you can see which one of these things came first and exactly when they popped up in the fossil record. So, like, we don't forget. You forget. Also, the whole idea that you have no idea what you're going to get out of evolution is just patently absurd. Evolution is actually pretty predictable most of the time. So, it sounds like you didn't think this through at all. You just heard someone else talk about evolution this way. Your preacher probably said, Oh, yeah, they say that we were all tadpoles and then we grew legs or maybe gills. Who knows? And then you just picked up a guitar and said, I'll teach this to kids. And that's... Oh, that is... Deeply annoying. My patient waiting bore much fruit, as happens without fail. I changed into a reeking ape with teeth and hair and tail. <sighs> Apes don't have tails. Millions of long years went past and then a million more. And suddenly I noticed that my tail was feeling sore. Well, it dropped off and my hair fell out. Old Darwin strikes again. I was a jolly ape, but now I turned into a man. Would you believe I started out as just a glob of goo? And changed from fish to bird to ape and ended up as you. Okay, so it wasn't fish to bird to ape. Tails don't just get sore and fall off. And evolution doesn't happen to individuals. It happens to populations. I understand that you have no idea how any of this stuff works. And I understand that you're just making a silly little music video and it shouldn't be taken that seriously. What I can't understand is how you can make something like this for kids without thinking for one second about the ramifications of your actions. You know the best part about teaching kids, especially kids in the age group that would watch something like this, is that they ask the best questions. Kids are so good at just picking and poking and prodding at an idea. If you've never been stumped by a room full of first graders, you've never really tried teaching. It's something that everybody should experience at least once in their lives. It's incredible because kids are so good at just tearing apart a concept and really getting down to the meat of it. And if you can recognize that, and if you know what you're doing, you can help foster and nurture that and help them to develop strong critical thinking skills that will benefit them for the rest of their lives. What you're doing here is the exact opposite of that. You are not giving them good critical thinking skills. You're not even teaching them the basics of the science that you don't want them to believe in. What you're teaching kids with this video is to be distrustful of science, to mock scientists and educators and academics. This right here is how you breed the next generation of anti-vaxxers and flat earthers. Because these are the worst, laziest arguments possible 
out of all that you could have selected, you pick the laziest, easiest ones. And that's what you're giving to kids while having somebody with a big PhD going, duh. It's just, this would be the same thing as if I came out in a preacher's uniform saying, oh, remember kids, you have to believe in the Jewish zombie, otherwise your ghost will get burned. It would be a gross misrepresentation of your beliefs. So that way, when they entered into a conversation with you, you would steamroll them. And that's what you're doing here. You're setting kids up to fail. You're setting kids up to regurgitate the crap that you're spewing. Crap that you probably heard from the last guy who heard it from the last guy who heard it from the last guy, and none of them thought about it either. So that way, when kids go out into the real world, they're going to be embarrassed. They're, these kids are going to be as embarrassed as you should be now. That theory is as theories go, rather odd and weird. The truth, however, is a lot less complex than you you, my friends, will listen on, you'll find the whole true story In which there's somewhat less of goo and rather more of glory Yep, and as usual, we're ending with a totally new claim without any evidence to back it up. One thing that I don't understand is how do you not see the glory in evolution? How do you not see this incredible saga from these microbes in muck, as you might like to call them, all the way up to not just us, but to all life on Earth. The immense biodiversity that came from such humble beginnings. Some things still in those humble beginnings, still living in these weird, lowly areas. How do you not get so excited about this glorious, immense, amazing tale of humans coming up out of Africa, surviving the Ice Age, flinging ourselves and our machines out into interplanetary space? How does that not fill you with just awe and reverence and humility and also inspiration? How are you not stoked about that? Okay, no, you're right. You're right. We have a lot to be ashamed of. <laughs> you call that science? Yeah, science fiction. I'll be honest with you. I, I really, I don't understand the hype about this one. Like I said at the beginning, people who sent this to me, people in the comment section here, they all say that this is such a catchy little tune and it's such a good song. And even if you don't agree with it, it's such a good, it's, it's a really very basic children's melody with pretty lazy rhymes. I, if this is the kind of thing that you like, I can recommend some good Rafi tapes. But like, as for me, I'd say this is a, a bad song that teaches dumb things. Overall, I give this one a science teacher challenge level two out of 10. Uh, it's just blatant dishonest indoctrination of children. If you know the first thing about how evolution works or really just science in general, you should be able to get through this one unscathed. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and all the other stuff that you do here on YouTube. Please exit through the gift shop on your way out. The link is in the description below. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and never stop learning. Bye-bye.